Welcome, fellow patients. It's me, Dr. Art Senpai again. Welcome back to the Do This Instead Hair Series, Part 3. So if you've watched the first and second video, and your hair joint dyspraxia seems to be 69% cured, but you still suck at line art. <gasps> so as a doctor, I have a professional obligation to cure you, but I can only cure you to 99%. Why not 100% you ask? Well, the remaining 1% is, um, talent, which you and I don't have, so you're never going to get cured. For any drawing-related illness, I always recommend my patients to try practicing. When practicing, it's very important to find good references, and good references are often juicy. You don't want people to search through your browser history and see your juicy references, right? If you wish to hide them, then Surfshark is the perfect protection for you. Staying safe online is an ever-growing difficulty, and you could be exploited by hackers. Surfshark is an award-winning VPN service that keeps you safe and private by covering up everything you do online. It allows you to change your IP address, making it harder to track and protects your privacy and identity when you're searching for references. Besides, one Surfshark account can be used on an unlimited number of devices, allowing you to browse for references anywhere and anytime. Use my promo code or scan the QR code right here to get an 83% off and 3-month subscription for free. There's also a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? It's one of the most common mistakes among beginners. This is because your hands are on autopilot mode by default, and you don't really have full control over them. By that, I don't mean your hands start drawing poop on its own when you try to draw a character. It's more like there's no conscious decision behind every stroke. You see, there's something called the hand-brain connection. Basically, your brain comes up with an instruction, and your hand is responsible for executing it. As the hand is performing its task, a feedback signal is sent back to the brain for processing. Over time, your neurological pathways that are responsible for pattern recognition, reproduction, and interpretation are strengthened and reinforced. Please speak English. In other words, do not practice 10,000 strokes once, but practice one stroke 10,000 times. What most of you are doing right now is drawing 10,000 strokes just for a single line. The reason why you do this is because you can't draw that particular line in one go, so you draw the line bit by bit to complete it. This makes your line art look hairy and messy. You must keep your hand under control and draw every line with just one stroke. Be like one stroke man. Over time, you will notice how much you have improved. Now that you have learned how to draw every line in one attempt, a second challenge appears. Every line has the same thickness. Imagine eating chicken breast that's only seasoned by salt and pepper. It's fucking disgusting. You need to add some spices like smoked paprika, cayenne pepper, and lemon zest to bring out the flavor of the chicken. Or just add MSG. MSG! My point is, it's important to add variety to the lines by changing the line weight, especially when drawing hair. I've talked about line art before, and here's the link for anyone who wants to check it out. That's the long version. The short version is, the lines and areas of shadow should be drawn thicker. On the contrary, the lines and areas that are closer to a light source should be drawn thinner. For example, the parts of the bang that touch the forehead. I recommend using thicker lines to express the volume of the bangs. On the other hand, use thinner lines when drawing the flow of the hair. Finally, we can take this line art to the next level by adding occlusion shadow. You can add the occlusion shadow at the gaps between the hair. In my honest opinion, the quickest way to improve your hair line art is by observing other professionals' work. Understand why they draw it that way and incorporate their style into your drawing. This mistake is not that common, but I'm sure some of you kohais love to draw your hair like this. Hmm, I feel like my hair is missing something. Guess I'll add these hair strokes to fill in the blank. No, you're only making it worse. Stop it. Get some help. You don't know how to add proper details into your hair drawing. So it did this as your coping mechanism. What are you drawing? Spaghetti? But senpai, this is realism art style. You know nothing. Don't you dare insult my art style. Listen here, you little shit. But the big difference between this and this is the former image has the correct hair structure, while the latter image is just filled with random lines and strokes. As I've said in my previous videos, the key to drawing a good hair is to draw them as if they are made up of pieces of paper, not threads. For the bangs, draw a medium-sized hair piece at the front of the forehead. For the side hair, draw two long hair pieces at the side of the head. And finally, one big hair piece at the back of the head for the back hair. To portray this realism art style, you need to add a lot of small hair strands on top of each other, and make sure those hair strands are within their respective hair pieces. 
And that's all for today's video. I know it's a pretty short video because line art is something that's quite hard to teach, and it requires a lot of practice. So ultimately, it all depends on you. All I can do is to share my tips with you Kohai so that you can implement them into your drawings. I'm planning a part 4 video where I will talk about coloring the hair. Comment down below to tell me your thoughts. Also, all Photoshop files are accessible in my Patreon, so make sure to check it out. Alright, that's all from me. Feel free to support me on Patreon, I really appreciate it. Please drop a like, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter. DM me if you want a commission from me. Alright, that's all from me. Jana Kohais.